Good evening, everyone. Alongside my sidekick, Faith Brody, I'm Gary Spolo, and welcome to the latest edition of WTHS Monthly Rewind, straight from the jungle. And, well, I gotta tell you, Faith, I think that this episode might be the best one that we've ever done. Well, that's because it's Gary Riffick. And in this Gary Riffick episode of Monthly Rewind, we have things for you like the school play and the military ball and powder puff. It's gonna be so great. Yeah, we got a doozy for you today, folks, and stay tuned. When your 17th birthday rolls around, it only means one thing, driver's license. Jason Hall gives us a behind the wheel look at driver's ed class. With a new school year in full gear, the driver's education program is once again starting up. Young students are very excited to get behind the wheel. We took to the roads to see just what it takes to get a driver's license. A student has to be 16 years of age and have already taken the um, the course, the, the classroom driver's ed, and taken and passed the written test with an 80. So once you turn 16 and you've already passed driver's ed and passed the test, the state test, the written exam with an 80, then you're an exam with an 80, then you're a candidate to go to the uh, Hollydale behind the Morgan Hagen Library and sign up for the program. All right, as far as the process, you know, as I said, uh, they have to pass classroom driver's ed and pass the written test. Once they do that, they have to go over behind the Margaret Hagen Library. Uh, this area over there is called Holly Dell. It's where the Board of Education meets Central Administration. There's an adult school office there. They'll go there in person between 8 and 4.30, Monday through Friday, and uh, they'll go to the adult school office there and sign up for the program. They'll tell the secretary they're interested in the driver ed program. They'll sign up for it. Uh, their name is put on a list. I receive a list like every two weeks, and then I work from that list is such a program required by the state? Okay, as far as being required by the state, behind the wheel driving is not required by the state. Now, the problem with that, though, is that if you are not going to go through a driving program, hours or a private driving school, then the student has to wait till he or she is 17 years old, get a 17-year-old permit, and, get, and then get a restricted license at 17 and a half. Okay, so that's six months after the 17th birthday. The benefit of going through a program, either ours or a private driving school, is that if you sign up early enough, like before you turn 16 and a half and get your six hours done before 16 and a half, you can get your license on your birthday. Plus, the other benefit is you also get a 10% discount on your car insurance. If you don't go through a program and if you wait till you're 17 and get a 17-year-old permit, then there's no insurance discount. Now that you know a little more about the program, you can see that such a course is necessary to ensure that those getting behind the wheel are educated and experienced. This is Jason Hall reporting for Monthly Rewind. Ever wonder what madness really happens behind stage at the WTHS Auditorium? Andrea Rosen gives us a look at the fall play, The Crucible. The WTHS fall play for the year 2001 was Arthur Miller's The Crucible. And although I have a lot of interviews with the cast members, you know as well as I do that you don't want to see them. You want the scandals, the drama, the gossip that goes on behind the scenes. Maybe it didn't happen quite like that. However, my time backstage showed me many interesting things. It's so dramatic. It's so different. Uh the Crucible had an all-star cast, including experienced seniors such as Nick Muni, Nick Rusco, Krista Cedar, and Mike LeCision. I found that this hardworking cast really liked the show because of how dramatic it was. The cast found that it was no easy feat becoming such serious characters, but with the direction from Mr. DiGennaro, the play began to take on a life of its own. Opening night pr showed promising success with the excited audience that awaited. But better than an exciting audience is an excited cast. You can see how hard the cast prepares its character. And although the play is full of serious tones, the actors prove they know how to lay things up. But now, it's time for the cast to put on their makeup. You gotta love it. The girls are putting makeup on the girls, the guys are putting makeup on the guys. You gotta love it. And with that in mind, the cast puts finishing touches and a little bit of crucible spirit before they go on. 
Thank God. I just want to thank God and my mom. And I'm Giles Coy. Folks, let me the best in the fourth act while I get pressed. Right before they open, the cast unifies to say a prayer, and then it's time for the big show. The first act sets the stage for the drama and the conflict. The actors are on fire as they deliver these powerful lines. It's good stuff. If you missed it, it's too bad. But you saw it, wasn't it good? The Crucible was absolutely awesome. I could feel the energy on stage. I could feel everybody got so into it. The audience, you could feel their hearts beating during the dramatic parts. You could feel them bringing on the tear during the sad parts. It was just amazing. You get an energy rush, and uh, we're going to go have fun now. <laughs> well, the current has now closed on The Crucible. However, these actors should be proud of the hard work and a job well done. Who knows, maybe some of these seniors will graduate to become famous actors. This is Andrea Rosen reporting for Monthly Rewind. Tests, college, grades, parents, etc. If you thought being a high school student was easy, Allison Boyer is here to prove you wrong. Check out our next segment on stress. Daddy invited Grandma over for dinner, and she'll be here in about an hour and a half. So I need all these chores done. I need the kitchen floor scrubbed. I need the powder room cleaned. Allie, hmm. what's up with the college applications? Have you started them yet? I've started, but I haven't finished yet. Well, what about the scholarship applications, the essays you have to do for all that? I, well, I have to get this done for Mom. Allie, come on. This is a priority, you know? Quinnipiac, okay, Elon, okay. RIT, I'll, I'll they all have to get done. I'll make sure I get to it, Dad. Okay, I'll I knew you would. See ya. And you'll have to deal with pressure. Al, Miss Smith just called. She needs you on um, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday afternoon to babysit. And um, you promised to help me with my English report, so I need you to help me with that when you get a chance. Oh, Allison, by the way, you have your uh, monthly rewind segment done? You know, you got to do that. You got to make sure you get me your uh, editing lists and your uh, show set up. Get that all documented because I have to sign off on that. Yeah. Did you get the monthly or the yearbook segments I done? Got to well, you got to get the, the yearbook stuff is due like this week, you know, okay. Tuesday. You need to get that done. Oh, do you know, you guys can pick me up after school today because we got to go do our powder puff jerseys and we got to get our, our pants and we got to decorate them. And you know, we have to get all the spirit stuff for, uh, for powder puff tomorrow. Oh, yeah, did you ever forget, did you? Oh, no. Oh. I was going to work on my segment after school, but I guess... Oh, well, sweetheart, we all have time. How about tomorrow? We have to get this done today. Okay. I'm so stressed out! Ugh. So I went to the students of Washington Township High School to find out just what's stressing them out and how they're dealing with it. So what kind of things stress you out? Uh, school, applying to colleges, and... Things like that, work. Uh, what stresses me out is like schoolwork, too much schoolwork and grades and living up to you know my expectations and you know stuff like that. College and work right now is really on my mind lately, so just something I want to relieve. Um, mostly homework and like just like grades and everything. School mainly just school homework. So how do students go about dealing with their frustration? Um, I don't know, like, I'll just, like, chill with my friends or whatever and just forget about it. That's really Play sports. That, that gets, you know, uh, frustration away and stuff, you know, kicking the soccer ball around, hitting tennis balls. I play guitar a lot, and that relieves my stress. If I didn't have this thing, I don't know what I'd do with myself. It's, like, my best friend. I usually, like, um, watch TV or listen to music or sleep go out with my friends, things like that. Well, you know, normal stuff like uh, I usually go down to the farm like Duffields or something and I chase around little animals like uh, goats and stuff. I just chase them. And it's fun and uh, just ch chase them around like normal people. Between college, school, homework, sports and other activities, it's no wonder why high school students are so stressed out. College appears to be a very stressful time in any high school career. Now, seniors, you're almost done, so don't worry. But juniors and everyone else, the hardest times are yet to come. But good luck, you'll pull through okay. This is Allison Boyer reporting for Monthly Rewind. 
Hi guys, it's Q102, it's Diego from Chew in the Morning, and you're watching Monthly Rewind. I have no idea what it is, but I hear it's pretty good, so have fun watching it! Since when did taking the bus become cool? Mark Schmidt gives us the scoop on how Bus 65 started this new trend. When was the last time you enjoyed riding a bus? A few students from Bus 65 of Washington Township put the fun back into the bus ride. Uh, Joe Kane started singing uh, the wheels and the bus go round and round. And uh, it just naturally progressed to uh, different show theme songs and then uh, clapping. And, uh, you know, we really like our bus and we really like uh, all the kids on it. Just have a good, fun time. And we're nice. The key to a fun bus ride is a cool driver. And Willis, the driver of 65, fits that description like a glove. <laughs> sure. Take high school kids to school and home. I have a great bunch of kids. They're well behaved and they're excited about riding the bus. So I enjoy my job and they enjoy riding with me. Thank you. They tell me you rap. Oh yeah, I can get down sometime. Hey, Diddy Yaki, my name is Scott and I'm back on the scene with the record machine. Said, ooh, papa, do it, how do you do? Correct time now, quarter to two. <laughs> <laughs> Other than Willis's rapping, another one of the 65 pastimes is the seat 19 wrestling match. Oh, so we uh, we can tell you that uh, on the back of the bus we sing. All right, we we sing on this bus, we dance, we uh, we uh, what else do we do, Jesse? Uh, yell at people outside the window. We cheer at the yeah, crossing no, we guard. Cheer. We cheer. Yeah. yeah. And when the bus gets underway, the bus 65ers pull out their song sheets and sing along with the day's selection. Usually a solo by John Devine is included. What you do if you say yeah. that I'm crying alone on the bedroom floor because he's hungry? What? Thanks to the students on Bus 65, they've made the best out of their bus ride. This is Mark Schmidt reporting for Monthly Rewind. A teenager's bedroom should be an expression of personality. Ashley DeAngelis gives us a look at some WTHS cribs. I'm Ashley DeAngelis, and this is Month Rewind Cribs. Although you see these people every day, most of you have not seen their rooms. I went out and got the in-depth look on three Washington Township students' rooms. Let's go take a look. Hi, I'm Tad. This is my dance party room. It's a fun thing. This is my bed. I love my bed and sleeping. It's all fun. This is my boyfriend's SpongeBob. Keeps me safe at night. This is my Cinderella collection. Isn't she beautiful? Yeah, she is. Look. Yeah, that's cute. You want to see my closet? Get out! Get out. Get out. You know, give me this! Get out! Get out! Hello, I'm Mark and welcome to my crib. This is my living room in here. Nice sofa. Little knickknacks up here. My entertainment center, state of the art. Sony monitor. It's my sitting room in here. Guaranteed it's the only sitting room with a five speed. Chairs are nice and comfortable for a good conversation with your friends. And here, this is my bedroom. Doesn't seem like much, but it's home to me. A nice bed and telephone, my alarm clock that I've had since I was real little. Of course, next to every bed, you must have a box of tissues. Here's a picture. These people aren't real. They just came with a picture frame. Sometimes it's nice to pretend that you have a family. <laughs> no. No. I live in a deep. <laughs> Oh man, I, I didn't realize you were coming. Give me one second. Alright, I'm back. I'm Blake Summerfield, and this is my room. 
Uh, as soon as you walk in my room, it's pretty much a disaster. We got the uh, clothes from like three years ago, and then we got my closet. I like find pretty much anything in my closet. We got yearbooks, baseball cards. Let's see what else we got back here? Piece of bread from a while ago, and a uh, Powerpuff doll that's not mine. On to my uh, what I have to say, my proudest possession in the room. My collection of footballs from Football Friday. I earned every single one of them. Working hard in the bleachers. So our varsity cornerback, Steve Kerner, dressed in a mink coat. You can explain that one. And I don't know, maybe the cutest kid in our school. Giovanni Spolito. Love you, little buddy. You got the old bobbleheads. You guys like being here? Yeah, they love it. Look at them shaking their head, yes. Over here, I don't know. We got the old, I don't know, it's cool, kind of pointless. Some empty glasses that I refuse to take upstairs. And now we have the best picture in my room and in any room in Township. Picture of the package, 700 pounder from Wing Bowl 9 last year. February 1st this year, bandits will be there. And don't pay any attention to that. It's rude. Kind of now you embarrass the heck out of me. Right, well, that's my room. Ladies, if you're interested, come stop by anytime. Doors always open. Other than that, I think you've stayed your welcome. Now get out. Hopefully there's three to one. These are definitely one of a kind. Lock your doors, because I'm coming to your room. Angeles, for my... With all that is going on in the world today, WTHS has decided to join together and show some spirit. Chelsea Ferry gives us an inside look at the recent spirit parade. Where were you on Wednesday, November 21st? If you weren't in the high school stadium, then you were missing out. Wednesday night, an extravaganza of events unfolded. WTHS's first annual spirit parade and pep rally took place. This was an event for all ages of the community to come out and have some fun. The night started out with a $1 donation at the door. Then the parade started. The ROTC Color Guard and our Minutemen Marching Band led in a parade of spirited cars. First, the Washington Township Police Dare Car and the Herfield Firemen led the parade. Then there were four cars featuring the 2001 Homecoming Corps. Then the spirited cars that were decorated by the students themselves. The cars were judged and awards were given to the three most spirited cars. Following the cars was the winning conference champs football team. Krista Cedar sang the national anthem, followed by the choir. Then there were three guest speakers, Mr. McGee, Superintendent Fleming, and Mayor Randy Davidson. Then came speeches from the most spirited girl, Chrissy Gorski, and the most spirited boy, Steve Kerner. Coach Brown, the football coach, took the floor. Followed by speeches from the WTHS varsity football captains. The winners for the decorated cars were announced, the volleyball team and the track team. The first annual Spirit Parade and Pep Rally was an event to remember. If you missed it this year, be sure to come out and check it out next year. Boo! Were you scared? Well, if you weren't, you will be when you see my buddy Gary Smaldone's segment on the WTHS Halloween celebration. <laughs> Not the best way to spend your Halloween? Why not spend it with us here at Washington Township High School? Most high schools allow their students to take part in many traditions. One of these yearly traditions at Washington Township High School is that of Halloween. Each Halloween, the administration at WTHS allows its student body to take part in an annual display of school spirit. 
Students are encouraged to wear their Halloween costumes to school, permitting, of course, that they are within the school dress code. Creativity is often on full display as students stretch their noggins to develop interesting and different Halloween costumes. The costumes themselves vary greatly, from men dressed like women, to mermaids, to gangsters, to angels, and even to walking toilet bowls. Naturally, some students purchase store-made costumes, but where's the fun in that? There was a great turnout of student participation in this year's event, showing great improvement over last year's Halloween celebration. As these video clips show, the students at Washington Township High School went all out in exhibiting both school spirit and their love for the holiday of Halloween. Even though not all high school students actually do go trick-or-treating at this age anymore, that did not stop anyone with the desire to participate. Although actual trick-or-treating was down from last year due to fear stemming from the recent anthrax attacks, the Washington Township High School administration allowed for a safe venue for student self-expression during a day different than all others throughout the school year. Yes, even some teachers got into the act to prevent this special day from being anything but ordinary. Many accessories were used to create the costumes you see here, from fake teeth, to fake piercings, to fake blood, to different clothing, to hair dye, and even the old favorite, the cardboard box. Enthusiasm is a must as students parade around school in disguise. Sometimes so much so that even their friends had a hard time recognizing not only who they were, but what they were as well. In all, this year's Halloween celebration at Washington Township High School was a bone-chilling success. Thank you all for spending your Halloween with us. This is Gary Smaldone reporting for WTHS Monthly Rewind. The ROTC cadets held their annual military ball this year on November 2nd at Adelphia's in Deptford. Our own Faith Brody gives us the inside scoop on this event. Hi, and welcome to the 2001 ROTC Military Ball, where people have already begun entering for a night of fun. A lot of people think that ROTC is just a lot of protocol and procedure, but after tonight's activities, you'll see that ROTC is fun all the time. The evening started off where ROTC members introduced their dates to one another through the receiving line. <laughs> what does ROTC stand for? Well, it's the Reserve Officer Training Corps for the Air Force, which means we train citizens to be better Americans. And and then continued with the slow dance just for seniors. But the night really took off when the head commander took off his jacket, signifying that the night would be full of fun. Well, the party appears to be in full swing now, and there are people standing in line getting their photos taken, and dinner's been served, and everything's just great. Here are some people having a good time. That's when the ROTC members decided to show us some of their dance moves. I would say to you from what I've experienced and I've been to many of the balls, it's the best one I think that we've ever had. I Proving everyone was having fun, including teachers. A lot of friends in ROTC. Oh my God, like everybody, even if you don't know them, you're still friends with them, you know what I mean? I graduated last year and I came back for it, it's great. Awesome. As a non-ROTC member, how do you feel about the military ball? I think it's really cool because I'm not even in ROTC and I can still come and have some fun and all my friends are here and I'm gonna party all night long. And what would a dance be without dancing, including a rendition of NSYNC's new song and dance, Dirty Pop. Is there any 
tradition behind the military ball? As such for us, no. Um, different branches of the military service do have their separate traditions. Um, the New Jersey 932nd, the ball is not a traditional thing. It's actually more of just a social event. And so the ball continued with dancing, dancing, and more dancing. The military ball was a great success and a lot of fun. No one will ever forget this night. This is Faith Brody signing off for Monthly Rewind. WTHS showed its true colors at the red, white, and blue banner dance. Mike gives us the dish about the junior-senior dance. On Saturday, November 3rd, the red, white, and blue banner dance was held in the 1112 gym and was quite a shindig. However, what most people don't know is that the original intent of the dance was to raise money for school promotional banners, but with recent world events, that all changed. We were originally going to do it as a fundraiser to buy the banners to surround the school, and with the events that happened on September the 11th, we kind of backed down a little bit and decided that it would be better to raise money to send up to the uh, folks in New York. This was Mr. Bollendorf's idea because we figured that the proceeds would um, benefit the buying of our new banners that's going to be seen on Gantown and Green Tree Roads. We decided to donate the proceeds to American Red Cross. With the dance's goal determined, it was time to get your groove on. Students entered the 1112 gym, paying a small $5 cover charge. There were refreshments, socializing, a lot of school and patriotic spirit. It's good. It's a, it's a way to get everyone in here, and we raise money for a cause in New York and stuff like that. It's a pretty good thing. I would love to say we would have 500 students tonight. I would like to hope it will come, become an annual tradition, yes. The students' reaction was absolutely phenomenal. All students I spoke to had an incredible time, enjoying it more knowing that their money was going to a good cause. With such a positive reaction, we hope to see more of these dances in the future. This has been Michael's decision for WTHS Monthly Rewind. As Gary would say, our girls' soccer team is on the ball this year. Adam Mizell gives us a look at what they've been doing. Around the globe, it's Board of Choices Soccer. And at WTHS, the girls feel the same way. This year, we're definitely a lot closer to it than the other years. We're definitely the closest. 
consist of all the sports teams. Yeah. We then talked to Mr. Procopio about the team's progression and success this year. We're where we want to be. Uh, we're in the coaches tournament. We're in the state tournament. We've been wanting, uh, this was one of our goals to uh, make it to these two tournaments, and we did. How do you feel this team is compared to past year's teams? Well, I think we have a lot more talent because we have a lot more off the bench. In the past, we only had the 11 or 12 players. This year, I ha we have probably 14 or 15 players with three or four subs coming in. And uh, it ranks right up there with the best of the teams that I've had. There you have it. WTHS Girls Soccer. Not just a team but a friendship. This has been Adam Izell for Monthly Rewind. The annual Powder Puff football game is one of the biggest WTHS events for juniors and seniors. John Manning gives us a look at the 28 year school tradition. Everyone's favorite sporting event was the school greatest ride. years now. Well, the girls are outside running drills in place for the big game. As you, you can see, the fans are just as much in about the, the tradition. 
tradition? Um, I don't know. I think it's a great tradition, you know, like a whole bunch of my friends from other townships do it too, but theirs is like pathetic compared to ours. So, it's awesome. Anything else you want to say? Thank you. Wow, that sure was a great episode. Mm -hmm. I think we should have a toast, a monthly rewind. Yeah. Cheers. Oh, you know what? Pretty good take. I think we should take this tree home in honor of uh, our time here in the jungle. And I think we should get our Mon resident monthly rewind lumberjack, John Manning, to cut down the tree. Uh, I agree. I think it would be a great idea mm -hmm. if John would come in. Hey, hey. John. How you doing? Yay! Yay! Well, that's all the time we have now today. And I I'll, had a great time. As did I, and I think we should be returning home soon because I'm lost and I'm I have to go to second period. It's cold. So, there are see you all me. next month when there's a lot more monthly rewind excitement coming your way. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be a doozy. November 2nd at Adelphia's in Deptford. Our Probably. I'm fixing my mic. Uh, you call me with my pants down, everyone. And the spirit dance. I mean, spirit parade. Yeah. Expression of personality. And, oh. Yeah, yeah, our first mess up. Shut. What? <laughs> Boo. Whoa. I'm just showing you up. Don't make fun of me in the control room, please. I'm, I'm still ready. Why is the camera on me? We're Chess showed its true. <laughs> oh, gosh. I, I tripped like I was trying to move, and then I fumbled on this stool. I'm fine. I'm fine. I've been chained and padlocked down to this stool now, so. WT. <laughs> Let me compose myself. Breathe in and out. John Manning, world-renowned lumberjack. <laughs> Give me that tree. Guys, we have five minutes. <laughs>
Yeah, I'm all right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To that one. Okay. And then we drink, and then John. <laughs> Not now. That was a great episode today. Uh, that sounds really corny. Oh, wow, it's John Manning. <laughs> Two, three, four. Oops, I did ag again. I played with your heart. Got lost in the game. Oh, baby, baby. You wanna be my lover? Gotta get this my friend. I like you forever. Do, 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 Adam, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Adam? Adam, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Adam? You've been struck by a huge chicken ball. Do 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 Adam, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay, Adam? Adam, are you okay?